Uh, we have an uh, ATC yield gentleman who p had a uh, HBV hepatitis related HCC on palliative TACE, and the latest CT in April this year showed no viable tumor. And he had a history of cholecystitis and CBD stones causing cholangitis in June this year. ERCP and stone extraction was performed, and the OC was clear. And also percutaneous cholecystotomy was performed for this patient in the same admission. And this is the PTC cholecystogram of this patient. We are going to perform a EUS guide gallbladder drainage for this patient today. Hi, Theo. Hi. Hello. So um, we're here uh, with this patient. Um, so right now, for us, uh, there are two main, indica main indications for uh, EGBD. So one is for patients with uh, acute cholecystitis who are not surgical candidates. Mm -hmm. And the other one is for patients who are on long-term cholecystostomy but cannot take off their cholecystostomy tube. Right. So um, in the, this year's uh, DDW and also UEGW, UEGW we've um, presented a paper just basically comparing EGBD versus percutaneous cholecystostomy. Basically, complications you see with uh, percutaneous uh, drain is uh, a lot more. Um, they can always come back with recurrent emissions, tube-related blockage. Some have recurrent cholecystitis. So um, for me, I'm quite convinced that the EGBD is procedure to go. To go. I think Don Wan may agree with me. I yeah. think they are doing a lot of EGBD procedures as well. Mm. Yes. So um, today, uh, right now, uh, this is an a elective setting. So this patient already has a cholecystostomy tube. You can see on x-ray, the gallbladder, I've injected some contrast. Um, there's re some reopening of the cystic duct, but uh, I think there's a large stone in there, so this is bound to... Do you to see pleural image now? Uh, can we uh, magnify the fluoroscopy? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, so you can see the gallbladder right there. Yes. So, and my scope position is in a long position, it's in the D1 area. And um, this is the usual, usual position with the eye puncture. You can also have puncture from the stomach. But uh, we have problems of uh, food going inside the gallbladder through the stent. So we, now we prefer to puncture through the duodenum. So um, the plan is to do uh, the gallbladder standing with the axial stent. So Dama is now holding the axials. Yes. I think some of you have seen this device. This has quite, got a quite a sophisticated uh, handle. So there's a staged deployment. So there's a one, two, three. So one is to push in the uh, catheter. Two is to deploy the distal flange, and three is to deploy the proximal flange. And this is a hot, hot axios. So Donga is showing us the tip of the device. So the tip is actually, uh, there's a quartery. Meaning now we can just puncture with a needle guide wire and then insert the stand system with a dilatation. Uh, some people will do direct puncture, meaning you can just use this device to directly puncture. This takes more experience and more skills, and uh, also there's a small margin of uh, error. Uh, in this patient, there might be some fibrosis, so we're going to do some uh, uh, direct puncture with the needle first, followed by um, the uh, insertion of the axial stent. Either? Uh, yeah, so I'm going to use the 19 gauge needle uh, with the Boston Scientific uh, X-Pack needle. Yeah. So again, this uh, needle is... Um, Quite a good needle because it's a very flexible, so it's a made of nitinol. So yes. I'm in the duodenal area. So you can see insertion of the needle, it's very easy. Can you see the US image? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. This is gold bladder, there is stone inside. So and you can see the stone. Yeah, yeah. it's a stone. Yeah, stone. That's a gold and bladder. my needle is going to come back, come out from here. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to start puncturing now. Okay. So I feel some resistance. The uh, needle is not inside yet. Yeah. Manipulating in the, the, the needle in the duodenal second or uh, first part sometimes is difficult because the scope tip is angulated. So we can feel some resistance. Uh, I think uh, the needle went uh, somewhere inside. Okay. We need to get a uh, uh, hold on, hold on. clear view. So I'll puncture one more time because yes, I don't yes. think I'm inside yet. Yes, yes. If it is not visible, then. But uh, this air bubble actually causing some artifact. But uh, this is. 
So the gallbladder, if a previous cholecystitis, can cause uh, 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 some fibrosis of the, of the wall. Ugh. Okay. Might be in okay. So th this side, this side. Yeah. Yes. Remove the needle slowly. Yes. Yes. Okay. Maybe I'm inside. Let's see. Do you see floral image now? Yes, can we fish to floral now? Yeah, maybe not. So sorry. Mm -hmm. Sometimes gallbladder is a little floppy when you puncture it. Okay. The wall actually uh, bounces back. So if it is the situation, then we can use the safety bar locked in the safe distance and uh, one quick jab to puncture yeah okay yeah i'm gonna try again gauge also so we're gonna have one more try of puncturing yes. Locate the needle tip. Yeah, yeah. I think we are here. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. We can inject some contrast and see the floral image, whether the contrast is going inside. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well can we have the guide wire? Then we can insert guide wire. This one. This is O25 Bigi Light. Yeah, O25 Bigi Light. Although the uh, diameter is uh, O25, it has a strength like O35 guide wire. So uh, this is very nice guide wire for, especially for interventional uses. When we do US guided intervention, we need to manipulate the guide wire inside the 19 gauge needle. Uh, pushing is easy, but sometimes we need to retract it and manipulate the tip. But in, during that process, the guide wire sheath can show some shearing of uh, phenomena. So, but this guide wire is uh, very thin, uh, do not show those kind of phenomena. So I think that this is uh, probably the ideal guide wire for use guided intervention. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so um, we're going to exchange. Yes. Now the guide wire is inside the gold bladder. He made uh, two, three coils inside the gold bladder and uh, try to keep the guide wire in okay. place and remove the 19 gauge needle. And we are going to do a uh, hard axial insertion over the guide wire. If you have guide wire inside the gold, the gold bladder, then it will control the puncture axis and also, even though it fails, we still have guide wire inside. Uh, we can try just the direct puncture and deploy the stent. But uh, I have seen several failed cases uh, with that okay. approach because of the uh, non-ideal deployment of the stent. Yeah, so with direct puncture, you really have one shot. I mean, if you miss that shot, then... Um um, you have to repuncture, and then it often makes the procedure much more difficult. Um, so, I mean, for selected cases, you have a big target, you have a big pseudocyst, um, 10 centimeter, which uh, your chance of um, not puncturing the target organ is uh, low. Um, otherwise, if you're dealing with a more complicated procedure or in patients with a previous infection, which you anticipate the uh, wall may be difficult to uh, puncture then it, it's better off to um, do the procedure uh, in different stages. So in the meantime, I will show you the axial stent, hard axial stent. Can you focus on this? Uh, the, we are going to use a 15 millimeter diameter stent and it has two flanges. The si diameter of the flange is uh, 2.4 cm 
And between the flanges, we have just 10 millimeter length uh, bridging stand. So we need to deploy this area uh, between the uh, GB wall and also duodenal wall. So this length is very small. That's why if you try to do direct puncture, sometimes this part cannot be located ideally uh, between the gallbladder and the duodenal wall. All right, so um, the stand is in position. Um, you can see the guide wire right here at um, where, my, um, uh, where my cursor is. You can stand, see the stand coming in. I'm pushing it, giving it a slight jerk. Okay, so the hot axios is supposed to go in quite easily. Now we are applying cauterization mm -hmm. to puncture the gold blood wall. Yeah. Now we are in. Okay, right. we are inside. So I'm going to put it a bit deeper. Yeah. To make sure it um, is deep in the system. So I'm going to deploy the distal flange. Just a moment. Make sure that the, the tip is inside, on okay. even on the fluoroscopic image. Yeah. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah, it's quite deep, so... Yeah. Okay. So you can see the stand here? Yes, yes. Around this okay. area, stand flanges here. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to change the endoscopic view. So you can see the stone right next to the stent here. Yes. And this is the gallbladder wall. Yeah. Okay. We expanded the proximal part of the uh, flanges. Now we are changing the view. Okay, let's change it in the... To, uh, uh, EUS to endoscopic view. Okay, so now you see the stent coming into view. Okay. This side. I'm going to pull back the stand a little bit so you can see more of the black mark. Yes. And then I'm going to lock. And then I'm going to open the stand. You can see the stand here? Yes, yes. And I'm going to push out the stand from the. We can see stand mesh here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now it's deployed. So the you can see bile is coming yeah. from the gold blade, yes. Okay. Oh, so excellent too. Uh, with the hard axial device, can we leave this guy wire inside you? Okay. I'm going to dilate up the stand a little bit because yeah. it's not open yet. Okay. I'm going to, you can see the, 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 all the bile coming out. So we should be in position. If in any case um, you worry, then you always keep the wire inside you. Um, and uh, I'm going to dilate up the stand slightly. To which diameter? So this the device is up to 15, but I usually don't dial it up all the way to 15 because yeah. sometimes it can cause uh, some tearing of the um, uh, wall, and uh, usually it takes only one day for the stand to completely open. But um, now it's quite small, so I dial it up to 10. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any questions yeah. from the floor? Yeah. Uh, this is Peter Colton here. Uh, no question. I'm just uh, I'm really amazed to watch that procedure. I've never seen it done before. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. So I think um, this is uh, really uh, one of the newer procedures of U.S. Uh, bleed drainage. Um, I'm quite optimistic that it will become the procedure of choice uh, as compared to percutaneous. Um, I'm a surgeon, so to think about to replace uh, cholecystectomy is a little bit counterintuitive, but uh, maybe, maybe 10 years later. <laughs> and uh, if necessary, we can go inside the gold blood cavity and uh, we can apply uh, electrohydrogel lithotripsy to fragment the stone and yeah. remove the stone. So uh, we also presented in DDW, one of our junior colleagues uh, presented the initial experience of um, what we call a cholecystoscopy. So basically um, doing a, putting an OGD scope through the stent into the gallbladder. So the stent diameter is up to 15, which means the scope introduction is quite, uh, quite easy. And uh, we could go inside, take a look. Okay. 
So, which means you can go inside gallbladder, um, do a lipotripsy removal of stents, uh, stones, and then uh, either leave the stents in situ or remove it. And uh, we also had uh, one patient who had uh, incidental gallbladder carcinoma, which was not detected on CT. And uh, for the first time, I mean, we were able to see this sort of pathology uh, endoscopically. So it was uh, quite an exciting experience for us. So, okay, can we dilate? Um, I think some of the colleagues in China, they are also doing this sort of procedure um, and uh, even the polypectomy uh, was possible within the gallbladder. So this is really opening up a new world of um, advanced uh, gallbladder interventions yes. through this uh, portal. Yes. Yeah. So till I'm waiting for a gallbladder EST next year from you. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that to Michael Burke. <laughs> So if we find a gallbladder uh, adenoma, we'll leave it to Michael. Okay, thank you. Do almost uh, most of the procedures from inside, now from outside. Uh, we don't like puncturing our skin and uh, get an access to the uh, uh, inner viscera from the skin. We can do most of the procedures uh, from inside, from gut. And also we can create this kind of a beautiful fistula and we can go in this fistula later. All right, so okay. you can see the gallbladder mucosa right there? Yes. I'm not going to insert the scope. Uh, and later scope we can uh, apply NBI or endomicroscopy, <laughs> endocytoscopy, <laughs> so we can detect minute changes or dysplastic changes of gallbladder. Okay, yes, I future. think... Uh, 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 Professor Sile is almost finished. Uh, yes, Steve. Okay, we, 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 we're uh, done we, also. We'll leave you here. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you.